Hello friends, welcome back. In this tutorial, we'll learn an exploratory data analysis Python library called SweetBiz. So what is an exploratory data analysis? Well, according to Wikipedia, exploratory data analysis is an approach of analyzing datasets to summarize their main characteristics, often using statistical graphics and other data visualization methods. Let's first use pip install to install the library. I'm going to use the dataset from the Plotly library as well, so feel free to install Plotly. And as you can see, I'm using Jupyter Notebook for this tutorial. If you need help setting up the Jupyter Notebook coding environment, I have a tutorial for it and link in the description below. You don't have to use Jupyter Notebook, of course. Any coding IDE will work just fine. If you prefer not to use Notebook, make sure to stay to the end where I'll talk about how to use other IDEs to generate the exploratory data analysis report. So let's first import SweetViz and Plotly. And for this tutorial, we'll be using the Gapminder dataset from the Plotly Express. It contains life expectancy data for more than 100 countries in the world in the past 50 years. Let's check what's inside the dataset. There are several columns, country, continent, year, life expectancy population, and GDP per capita. We don't have to worry about the last two columns because uh, those are just country code. And we'll use SweetViz to perform the exploratory data analysis on the Gapminder dataset. Then let's create an object called report. And we're going to use the, the SweetViz to analyze the data frame. So in just a couple seconds, uh, this should be complete. We can then use this report object and show because we want to show it in a notebook. So we're just going to show notebook. And this report pops up. As you can see on the top of this report, it shows the number of records. Here, the columns are called features. So there are eight features or eight columns. And we can see that one column contains category data, five columns contain numbers, and two columns contains text. And it also shows whether we have any duplicate data. So scrolling down to the report, We'll find the detailed analysis on each of the data column. And if we click on them, it will expand to show even more detail. For example, if I click on this life expectancy on the top, we'll see the euro statistics. So maximum, mean, average, and so on. And in the middle, there is also a histogram showing the life expectancy distribution. We can also set the number of bars by clicking these um, buttons. And this association section here basically shows the correlation coefficients of this particular variable with other variables. For example, this tells us that the G GDP per capita and the continent are kind of highly correlated with life expectancy, which makes sense. And if we keep scrolling down, we also see some sample data points. We have the most frequent values and we have smallest and largest values for the life expectancy column. I want to talk about another feature in this suite this report. So let's go back to the top and there's this associations button let's click on that and then this table shows up it's basically the correlation matrix which is presented in a unique way so first of all there are no numbers in this matrix and the correlations are actually presented by using rectangle and circle shapes it looks like as the correlation coefficients gets closer to one the shapes will get bigger and the color will get darker the smaller shape and lighter color means the coefficients are close to zero, therefore uh, not important. Although in our example, there's no negative coefficients based on this color scheme, we can tell that if we have a coefficient closer to negative one, then we're going to have a big shape and as well as a very bright red. Also note that the trivial diagonal is left blank intentionally for clarity because the diagonal will always be one. So it's probably better to just leave them out so the users don't get distracted. To interpret this matrix, let's take the life expectancy variable as an example. And we can tell right away that the continent as well as the GDP per capita give the most information about the life expectancy variable. If you want to find out the actual coefficient, I'm going to close this one. You can go to this variable section and then uh, find those values under associations section. So I want to show you another interesting uh, feature of SweetWiz. So we can actually compare two data sets in one report. Let me create two subsets of the data. So the first one, the F1 will be the data from year 1952. 
and the second data frame df2 will be all the data from year 2007. So we're going to use the with this compare method to compare the two data sets. And inside this compare method, we need to pass two lists containing two different data frames. So first of all, we need to pass the first data frame and then we need to give uh, this data frame a name. So let's just call it 1952 data. And then we're going to pass in the second data frame into the second list. First element of that list will be also the data frame itself. And the second element is the name of the data set 2007 data. Let's run this. And once it's done, we can again, we can show uh, this compare report in the notebook. Then we see that the same exploratory data analysis report, except that this time we also get to compare uh, the two data sets side by side. So this is very convenient. And as you can see, the 2007 is in a kind of orange color and the 1952 data is in um, the blue color. Now, if you don't want to use the Jupyter notebook coding environment, that's no problem. So for example, uh, here uh, we have the code that we just run inside Jupyter Notebook, except the last line here. So in the Jupyter Notebook, what we did was uh, we used the report and then show notebook. Whereas here we use the same report object and then we show HTML. So let's run this and see what happens. So the report runs and then we actually get a full web page of the report, which is pretty nice. You can see this web page is being saved onto my disk as well. And actually you can give this a name. So for example, let's put the same folder path and I'm going to give it the name uh, test report .html. I'm going to run this again and hopefully we should be getting a new report with the name test report. So here we go. We have another file called test report .html, and this is also being saved in the same folder or the folder that you put into uh, this show HTML argument. If you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button. It's going to help the channel a lot and I really appreciate it. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next one.